What's going on, guys? This is Rob, and we're in it now, son. We are in the thick of it now, man. Let me tell you something. Oh, my God. Dude, the ending of this story is nuts. Oh, you guys are going to hate me at the ending of the story. <laughs> so what this does is this picks up, again, with the Kree Armada attacking Earth. Now, for those of you guys catching up with us, make sure you check the playlist down in the description. It'll get you caught up on everything that we've done so far. But the long and short of this is that the Kree created the Inhumans, and then the Kree wanted to wipe out the Inhumans because there was a prophecy that the Inhumans would destroy the Kree. So with the Supreme Intelligence having returned, it sets its sights on Earth because it's believed that's where the last Inhuman group resides, basically, right? And, that, and we know that's true. Like, you have Black Bolt of the Inhumans, you have all these guys who are here, right? So the idea of the Kree is launching a full-scale attack against Earth. And when I say a full-scale, I mean the entire Kree armada is here. Now, the reason for that is because, remember, in Marvel Comics, some of the most powerful beings, and in fact, the most powerful beings in the universe reside on Earth, right? You have, like, Franklin Richards, you have all these guys, right? I mean, Earth is in, is just, it's crazy how OP Earth is. So the Kree need the Armada. Now, that's the crazy thing here, is because you do have Susan Storm with her force fields holding things off as best they can, but the Baxter building is only one part of the equation. The invasion of the Kree Armada is against everybody in New York, the entire city. And so as a result, it's a full contingent of the Avengers, the X-Men, the fans, Fantastic Four, everybody's there. Of course, Johnny Storm's not there because again, Johnny Storm is basically dead. And so what you get is you have this full on attempt by all these different superheroes uniting under the banner of saving the city of New York from everyone. Now they do what they can, where they can, but again, there's also unforeseen consequences. For example, Doctor Strange is able to steer away a, a Kree ship by basically taking it down, but as opposed to it flying towards the water, it crashes into a building. So again, collateral damage. Yeah, it sucks, but it's just one of those things that happens. And so at that point, we transition to the other side of Zero, where you have the Anti-Priest. Now remember, the other side of Zero is a nightclub in the city of New York that's masquerading as a nightclub, but in reality, it houses basically the forces of Annihilus, members of the Annihilation Wave residing on Earth, trying to find a way to open the portal to the Negative Zone so the Annihilation Wave and Annihilus can re-enter into the main Marvel Universe and destroy everything, right? Remember, Annihilus is a nihilist himself, right? Life is meaningless. He wants to basically just destroy and end all things in existence. But with this major attack happening, the Anti-Priest realizes this was unexpected. And in order for them to be able to secure their goal, they have to open a portal to the negative zone now. There is no waiting. And so when contacting Annihilus, Annihilus responds, yes, open the portal to the negative zone, get it open as fast as you can. So while all this is happening, basically the forces from the other side of Zero invade the Baxter building. Now, the crazy thing about this is that you do have the future foundation there, meaning Franklin, Valeria, those guys, they are present there. But before we get to them, we switch back over to the Kree Armada and we have the Inhumans who have shown up to basically the Kree Armada itself. Now, that's when the Supreme Intelligence realizes the anomaly, quote unquote, Black Bolt, the Inhuman who is prophesized to destroy the entirety of the Kree Armada, that he's here. And so what they do is they break off a segment of their forces from the attack to launch an attack against the Inhumans. Now, again, while that that's happening, what you had was this idea of the Avengers to basically find a way to safeguard the city of New York. Now, this is going to be a monumental moment here. Right? I want you to keep this moment in the back of your head because what they do is they push Susan Storm's force fields to a greater level than she's ever experienced before. What they do is they basically use her abilities to create force fields and they tap it into the power of Tony Stark. And so literally when she creates a force field, Tony Stark's powers amplify it, but it requires her to push her powers to the limit in order to ensure the force field can stay intact. And so once the perimeter is pushed further out, the force field's erected and the entirety of New York is under the protection of the force field itself, meaning the only forces that are here are the forces that were basically ground troops. Now, there is a bit of a battle. There is somewhat of a skirmish that takes place. It's not overly important. Of course, She-Hulk's taken out, which is no surprise. Uh, Red Hulk's taken out, which is a surprise, right? And this is all done by the 
the Kree sentries. Remember, the sentries are kind of the, the foot soldiers that get sent in before the Kree soldiers arrive. And the sentries are just giant robots is really all they are. But because they're so capable and because they're so easily built, it would make a lot more sense to send them in as opposed to Kree soldiers, which would basically diminish the, the entire population of the Kree empire. And so as a result of this, what we end up doing is jumping to the Baxter building itself when the forces from the other side of Zero invade the Baxter building. Now, when they get here, of course, the kids aren't necessarily prepared for it. But again, because you're dealing with forces of Annihilus, not all these kids are godly in terms of powerful. Now, Franklin Richards is here and Franklin Richards could use his powers to keep every, like to end everything like that in the blink of an eye. And a lot of you guys are probably going to be asking yourselves, why isn't Franklin Richards just using his crazy powers to end all this? There's a reason for that. There's a reason why Franklin Richards is not using his powers. And we'll find out what that reason is later on, right? Probably next week when we get the greatest moment ever in the history of Marvel Comics. Oh my God, it is so ridiculous. Dude, I'm so, man, I'm so excited. Man, I'm so excited for that. This dude is gonna be, oh my God, it's gonna be so ridiculously amazing. But, but again, you know, with these guys trying to keep their forces at bay as best they can, or at least keep the forces of the Kree at bay, the Future Foundation, these kids led by Valeria Richards, basically hit an evac button, right? It's a button that basically teleports the Future Foundation to a different location. It was a safety measure that was built by both the Future Foundation and Reed Richards in case anything popped off. And so what ends up happening is Spider-Man literally tells Reed, you stay here, you focus on this, Susan needs you here, I will go deal with the Baxter building. And so when Spider-Man gets there, of course, he finds the forces of Annihilus from the other side of Zero, who are trying to open the portal to the negative zone. Now, here's the thing. This is, man, this is, this is one of the cool moments. It's not the coolest moment, but it's a really good moment, right? It's a really good moment. So Spider-Man shows up here, and this is the thing. Spider-Man's able to take these guys on, and for the most part, overpower them. One of the things that I do want to specify about what you're seeing here, and you guys can tell, we're only seven minutes in, right? So, like, we got a lot more going on in this video than what I've covered so far. Man, shit is about to pop off. Dude, it's about to go absolutely nuts. So here's the thing, right? So Spider-Man is able to face these guys, but this is one of the only times times that you're ever going to see Earth superheroes face off against the Annihilation Wave. Remember, when the original Annihilation event happened, it opened up basically out in space. It took place out there beyond Earth. While the Annihilation event was happening, Civil War was happening on Earth. So you really didn't have any of Earth's superheroes focus on that event. In fact, Richard Ryder showed up to Earth. Nova showed up to Earth and was like, hey guys, there's a much bigger thing going on here. The universe is at stake and the superheroes are like, Blarg, Civil War, you have to register. So he's like, no, nah, I'm good. Peace. That dude peaced out and went right back to the battle again. He's like, our superheroes are useless all. Ain't nothing we can do. We just got to worry about this on our own. Now, the problem with this is that while Peter is facing off against the forces of, of the other side of Zero, that they managed to attach a disc to the portal for the negative zone. And that's counting down. And while Peter's trying to, trying to stop him, the number keeps counting down, right? It keeps counting. And then eventually, Peter's not able to stop the door from opening. So the negative zone portal opens up. And when it does, Johnny Storm! Storm is waiting for Peter Parker. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Johnny Storm is alive, and we will find out exactly how it was he survived here. Don't worry, I'm not gonna leave y'all hanging on that. Well, I, I kind of am, because we're not gonna cover it in this video. But the surprises keep coming, ladies and gentlemen, because while you have Susan Storm and you've got Iron Man who were over there with the force field technology and everything going on, the Kree soldiers, or at least a handful of Kree soldiers, their special ops team basically teleport to Earth, they detonate a bomb, and they sabotage it. So ultimately, the force field comes crashing down. Now, at that point, the Kree sentries, over, they overpower Ben Grimm, who's like the last guy left to stand against them, right? So, there's not a whole lot they can do. So, you got Johnny Storm, he's talking to Spider-Man. Peter Parker's like, dude, we're, we're in a pinch, man. Like, we're literally losing. The Kree Armada, not only are they going to destroy the city of New York, they're going to eradicate the entirety of Earth. Like, everything's gone. There's nothing we can do to win here, man. Like, time's up. And so the response of, of Johnny is, okay, I've got a solution. Let me take care of something first. And to show the world that he's alive, he flies up into the sky and creates the burning fort. It's his insignia, right? It's like Johnny Storm's thing. It's like his thing, right? They, they always do it, right? So it's his way of showing, like, I'm very much alive. And so what ends up happening is in that realization, it kind of gives Ben Grimm a sort of renewed vigor, right? So he's back into the front again. But 
at the end of the day, it doesn't really make any difference. Everybody is falling, right? The forces are falling against the power of the Kree Armada. It's just way too capable and it's just way too strong. And so in the end, like while the Fantastic Four do have a Nihilus under their control, Johnny Storm says, okay, here's the thing. Yes, the Kree Armada is beyond our ability to defeat, but I've got an ace in the hole. I've got the cosmic control rod. And always remember, lest we forget, he who controls the cosmic control rod controls the annihilation wave. I control the annihilation wave. Unleash hell, right? Like they just come pouring out of the portal like madmen. He literally starts opening portals all around New York, right? Those portals come flooding out. The annihilation wave just unleashes onto the entire Kree Armada. Here's the crazy thing about that. Where Johnny's able to lead the, the annihilation wave against the Kree Armada at the end of the day, lest we forget, Annihilation happened, and because Annihilation happened, the Kree Empire retrofit their technology or their ships to make sure that if the Annihilation Wave ever emerged, they would be prepared for it. So Johnny Storm, despite the fact that he's able to offer help, he's fighting a losing war. There's nothing he can do to win here, right? I mean, they can hold off as best they can, and they are doing decent enough, but in the midst of all this, you do have Susan who looks at Reed and says, Reed, we do have an ace in the hole, right? We've got a we've got so we've we've got a way that we can win this. But Reed is hesitant to do it, right? He's like, I don't know if I'm willing to do this. Is something that I'm not entirely sure of because I don't know what would happen if we did. It could lead to the ruin of all, or it could lead to the day being saved. And so while that's going on, you basically have forces from the Kree Empire who managed to invade the warship or the, the, the capital ship of Johnny Storm. Now the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, they step in and do what they can, where they can, but at the end of the day, they're not gonna win. Nothing's going to happen because those Kree soldiers invade. They take out Reed. They basically temporarily incapacitate Susan Storm. And then they go to like destroy the entirety of the vessel. Now, the thing about this is that you do have Spider-Man, you got Johnny Storm, you got those guys who tried to destroy this Kree armada to the best of their abilities. But here's the thing, fighting off against these Kree forces is no easy thing. One, the Kree are exceedingly strong and incredibly durable, right? They are more than enough for any regular superhero. Think of, think of them as like Captain America amplified several times over in terms of strength, speed, agility. And that's just a regular Kree. Add into that the various enhancement that they've had through their physiology, as well as the advanced technology, their arms and armament, these guys are hard to defeat. The worst part about all this for the different superheroes on Johnny Storm's battleship is that you're now talking about the Kree Special Forces. Not only is it all the stuff that I just mentioned, these guys are trained to kill. Like they are wildly capable. And so these guys overpower Ben Grimm, they overpower Peter Parker, and they actually get to Susan Storm. Now the funny thing about this is Susan Susan Storm makes this comment. She's like, look, I'm sorry, boys, but I'm in a bit of a rush right now. I assume that you're going to politely move out of the way and just let me get on with it. Right. And like, they're literally just got guns trained on her. She's like, all right, then. Right. She literally encases herself in a force field, encases their heads in force fields, destroys all of them and sends them flying out there. Right. Susan Storm, man, woe be tied the poor soul that decides to mess with this chick. That's why I'm telling y'all, man, depending on how the Marvel Cinematic Universe handles Susan Storm, that chick's a hoss. You ain't seen nothing right? Carol Danvers, she's decent enough. Like she's okay. She can do some stuff and she's kind of cool, I guess. But like Susan Storm, she's on a whole nother level, right? Like she's, she, it's, man, I'm excited to see what she's able to do. But in the midst of all that, Johnny Storm's like, you know what? I've had enough, like enough of this, right? Dude uses this power, shuts down the entirety of the Kree forces, right? Just annihilates all the Kree soldiers on his warship. And it's just like, okay, let's get back to it again. Now, here's the thing. You have the Supreme Intelligence that asks one of his soldiers for a report, right? And this guy says, as expected, the wave has cracked before our armada, meaning our ability to retrofit our ships in preparation for another potential annihilation wave attack, which we didn't know this was gonna happen, but it's fortuitous that it did. Our ability to retrofit our ships for that, it's paid off, right? The annihilation wave is not able to hold against our ships. More so than that, the anomaly city shows power fluctuations and a flat vector. Its path will bring it in to our shadows. In effect, the Attilan city is basically going to explode at some point in time. It can't maintain its ships and it's, it doesn't have any real propulsion and it's on our way to us. We will ensnare it quite readily. And so at that moment, 
Susan Storm and Reed Richards do the only thing they can do. Son, son, son. Man, I told you all last video was going to be important, right? Like literally, Reed says, this is it. We're in the right place. And Susan Storm says, I'll seal the room. Now, Reed says, before I do this, maybe I'm not thinking of everything. Maybe there's another solution. Are we sure? And the response of Susan is, on Earth, death metal is falling from the sky. Much more will follow, I'm sure, triggering the effects of a nuclear winter. He said, a season of dying. Remember? And so Reed's like, okay, then I guess we do it, right? This guy activates the arc that was given to him, right? And then just, that's it. Every head turns. This just like wormhole appears out of nowhere, right? Like just behind everybody. This wormhole literally opens up and out of this wormhole comes none other then Galactus, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, Reed Richards summoned Galactus to the battle. And this guy, man, let me tell you something, this dude's about to unleash hell. Man, I'm sorry, I'm so excited, people. It's an exciting time in this story, right? It's just one of, the, one of these super exciting moments. But here's the funny thing about this, right? This is not why Galactus gave him the arc. He immediately summons them telepathically and is like, what's the meaning of this? And the response of Reed is like, you said that we would know when to summon you, right? Like, we would know the time. This is it, Galactus, and Galactus is like, no, this is something different. This is a preamble. I've consumed four worlds in anticipation of something greater. And so where Reed's like, well, then what are you talking? Like an entire Cree or like the entire Cree Armada has left their home galaxy. They've come here to earth. They're launching an attack against us. We're all dying. What could possibly be worse than this, right? And the response of Galactus is you, Reed Richards. I was speaking of you. I will handle the Kree Armada. This dude shows up and it's just like, flat, just like that, right? I mean, it just annihilates most all of the Kree Armada. Now at that point, the Kree's like, we gotta get out of here, man. Like the Kree soldiers literally tell the Supreme Intelligence, dude, we got like, like this, there's just Kree soldiers talking to me. He's like, look, Supreme Intelligence, I know you've been gone for 300 years. There is a figure of speech that we've developed in the time that you've been gone. And it goes like this get while the getting's good and we need to get out of here man like we need to like dude galactus is here they detonate mega bombs right like everything they have their entire their entire like arms like everything right like they fire everything at this guy nothing happens right i mean because it's galactus right like bombs aren't going to destroy this guy and so the response of the supreme intelligence is is the anomaly close right where's the inhuman vessel and they're like it's right over there right and it's making its way over to us but then out of nowhere they're like something's appeared like what is this like something's appeared here right and it's not galactus this thing like like whatever these guys are blow away a huge like what's left of the Kree armada it gets completely and totally annihilated and that's when galactus turns around and says this is why i'm here this is the death i have foreshadowed mad gods have come to destroy us the celestials have arrived that's right ladies and gentlemen the mad celestials at the beginning of the story have made their way into the main marvel universe how it is they did that we will cover in the next video but son 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 man let me tell you something man it's about man it's about to get crazy about to get rowdy but with that being said guys we're gonna bring this video to an end thank you all for watching and i will catch you all later peace